Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Start our series today, Outfitting for Living, uh, Standing Firm No Matter What. Uh, that's our series for the next few weeks. Uh, and especially with the idea that God gives us stuff to put on as His people. Uh, we focus especially on the belt of truth, uh, holding it together. Uh, that, that, that's our focus today, um, dear Christian friends. When I was a, a sophomore in college, I, I decided that I wanted to do some more scuba diving. I had done some scuba diving when I was like a senior in high school and really enjoyed it. Kind of got away from it because I, um, uh, you know, I had to work and all that stuff and go to school. And all, so I, I just hadn't done much scuba diving. Uh, and so I wanted to get back into it. And, and a neat thing is that they offer a two-unit class, and I needed a two-unit class. All right? <laughs> so I took the two-unit class of scuba diving, uh, and, and the guy that taught it was great. And, and what they do is they teach you all this stuff out of the pool, right? They, they teach you how to, how, how everything is, how you're supposed to use everything, what you're supposed to put on. Uh, they, they, they teach you fun facts like if you quit breathing off that scuba uh, and hold your breath and shoot from the bottom of the pool to the top of the pool, you're going to put holes in your lungs. Okay, they, they, they teach you all this good stuff. Um, and, and, and then you have to take a test on it even and, and all those things. And, and we had some neat people in the class. I mean, we had this one guy. And he had almost made the Olympic team swimming. Oh, and come with a hairbrush. And, and he was taking this class. Me, you know, I think we had to swim in 800 or something to get in. Uh, I, I made it, but, but it was like the tortoise and the hare. You know, they, they, this guy was all dry by the time I got out of the pool. Yeah. All right, so, so he was in that class, too. And, and uh, so the day came when we had to get into the water. Okay? Um, and and um, he, the, what the instructor was going to do is we, we kind of we threw the... Uh, t- tanks in the water. I think it was college. It was like a 12-foot deep pool. It was pretty deep. And he had to go down, put them on, get on the lung, and, and then breathe down there for a while. And then just come back up. He was going to go down make sure we were all all right. Uh, and and uh, it, it was easy because I'd done it before. You know, and it's, it's kind of peak. Anybody done any scuba diving? Yeah, I, I, I love to do I love to, to this day, I'd love to throw a tank into a pool and just go sit on the bottom because it's so peaceful. You know, you breathe out that thing. Really, it's, it's pretty cool. So, so it, it was real neat for me, but this guy that was this almost Olympic swimmer, he gets into the pool, and he dives down, and he puts the thing on, and the instructor's with him, and he freaks out. It's like he knew everything there was to know, you know. But once he gets into the pool, he's freaking out, and he tries to jam to the surface, and the instructor's pulling him back down, and the instructor, the guy's strong, you know. And so he can't hold him, and he finally smacks him in the chest to get that air, boom, like this, you know, get the air out of there. And he smacks him three times and fights with him. They come to the surface, thank God the guy was all right. And the instructor takes everybody out of the water, and he starts to talk about the fact that it's the real deal when you're in the water. Right? You can talk about all this other stuff, but this is the real deal. This is life. And he was saying, hey, it's a life and death situation in the water. He says, we're going to go on a, 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 on a beach dive and a boat dive, and you've got to know, when we're on that beach dive, you can look back and see Newport Beach, but you're in the water and you can die. It's real stuff. Okay? And sure enough, we're on the beach dive. I'll never forget it. There was a couple divers not connected with us, and the one guy was frantically looking for his partner, and his partner died in the water. And my instructor had to take him in, and I don't know why he looked at me. Maybe because I'd been diving along. He says, you keep all these people calm. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I said, you keep all these people calm. And, and I looked at him, and I just said to what the instructor said. I said, this is the real deal. Okay, we're not we're not talking about it anymore. Everybody, this is the real deal. We're in the water. When that word finally is used, sometimes it's an add-on. You know, you're writing a letter. Oh, finally, uh, the the cat fell into the pool, and she looked so funny. Huh? Or 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 finally, uh, the the flowers are done blooming. Right? You, you, it can be a tack-on stuff, right? This can kind of attack us, or finally can be the climax. Finally can be getting into the pool. Finally can be getting into the thing that everything else prepared you for. I really believe that part of the reality of this text at the end of Ephesians is a climax finally. The book of Ephesians is, is a wonderful, wonderful exposition of Christian truth. 
I mean, it starts out in chapter 1, and it starts like from the begin, from before the beginning. Before God created anything, He chose you to be His. And in space and time, He created you. In space and time, He sent Jesus to die for you. In space and time, He sent the Holy Spirit to touch your heart and bring you to a living faith in Jesus Christ. Right? It talks about all these things. And it talks about Ephesians in the second chapter. It says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. It means you can't reach out and grab God, so He came and grabbed you. His Spirit came to your heart and touched you with Jesus by grace. His undeserved love poured down upon you. By grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not a good work says anyone should boast. That even goes on. For we are His workmanship, creating good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Great stuff to know, right? I mean, as you read through this book, it talks about our relationships. Our relationships in life in God's people. The church, which means the gathering. You know, we kind of look always look at the idea of church as being a thing, a, kind of a, a, a stayed thing. But the, the word actually means the gathering of God's people. It's a, it's a, a living, busy, active, vital thing. It's, it's an alive thing. So it talks about our life in the, with God's people. It talks about our life and the relationships that are closest in our lives. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. And, and of course, tacked onto that is how mom and dad should love their children. Talks about a husband and wife relationship. Be servants to one another. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Talks about our relationships uh, uh, with, with, as a worker and those who, who manage workers. All of these things it talks about. It's a wonderful Christian exposition of truth. But I don't think you're in the pool until this final. I think this finally throws you in the pool. And now you've got to live it. Put the next one up for me. Finally, so that when the evil day comes, you can stand. Huh? Finally, so that when the evil day comes, you can stand. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Why does He have to write this? Because our fight is not against flesh and blood. We don't live textbook lives. We don't hear what God says, and then we just decide to do that. No, we have an enemy. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against the evil powers and the principalities that are in the air. The, the, the evil, Satan and his evil demons that are all around us, they are the renaissance, if you will, of everything that is evil. They have tempted and continue to tempt us to walk away from God. They tempt us every day to walk away from truth. Everything that is evil in this world stems from Satan and his demons. See, all of a sudden now, we're in the pool. We like to forget that. We like to think that life is just about me and the decisions I make. And when we do that, we, we kind of separate ourselves from truth. We, in a sense, take ourselves out of the pool. We don't live life at all. We just kind of exist. So, in this whole series, God is going to show us how to live in this pool, this struggle of life. But He gives us stuff to put on, like my kids with their shin guards, you know? He gives us stuff to put on. The first thing is the belt of truth. The full armor of God, the first thing is the belt of truth. Now, I, I don't think, I don't think God uses these terms for us to forget about. Oh, Pastor, just talk about truth. Oh, no, the belt stuff, who cares about that? No, I think he did it for a reason. The belt of truth. As I said to the kids, the thing that belt does it's a tie all together, right? It holds things together. God's truth is supposed to hold our lives together. Put the next one up for me. Let's read this together. One, two, three. Where are you having trouble holding it together? Where are you having trouble holding it together? Uh, it, it might be because the evils of a 
and those around you that have come to roost in your life. Those people have, have hurt you. And, and it's put you in a place where you're disoriented. Maybe even someone who's been very close to you has walked away from you. And, and it's left you in this nether world, huh? You're, you're just not put together. You're just heavily. There might be things that you thought would never change in your life. I'll always have this job. And it's gone. My mom will always be there. My mom's 86. I still think she'll always be there. But one day the Lord will take her home in the natural cycle of things. Huh? My son, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, uh, he, I took him, we took him to where he's going to go to college for nursing uh, next year. But he, he's gone to local schools here the last three or four years. And, and, and he, every, every year he was attacked by what I call uh, anti-Christian propaganda. Uh, parents with young people in high school, college, you've got to be aware of this stuff. They learn good stuff here. They learn good stuff from you. True stuff. God the Creator. God who, in Jesus Christ, is the only way, the truth, and the life. God the Holy Spirit who touches their hearts to give them life and empower them to live in that life. But I tell you, outside this place, there's all kinds of anti-Christian stuff that's not truth. And the evil one looks to throw people off their pegs with that. To make their life disheveled. So that they can't hold it together anymore. A week didn't pass where Jeff didn't want to sit down talking about something. Every day he was challenged to put on the belt of truth. Pretty soon he started looking up things for himself, Christian apologists on the internet. And pretty soon I was learning from him <laughs> about the belt of truth. Or maybe you're just in a world of doubt. Do you think Satan plays fair? you think he says this is out all the facts you can decide? Or do you think he tries to put doubt in your life? Maybe you're in a world of doubt and aren't sure about things. God would say, put on the belt of my assurance. The fact that 2,000 years ago, a man came and suffered and died, and you know what? He beat death. The women came to the tomb. He wasn't there anymore. The soldiers ran away. What made him? What made him run? The apostles turned from a bunch of chickens to a bunch of to, to a bunch of heroes. How did that happen? Jesus, is that truth? That His Spirit empowers us to put on every day. And so often when we look at a text like this and, and think about truth, we think only about fighting against something. We lose the wonderful truth that every single one of us is on a mission in this life to love and to care as Jesus did. My other son, James, you have to excuse me, for two weeks I've only been with my family, right? So, so it's all I can draw from right now. But, but my, my other son, James, he, he uh, uh, works in, in the mall, and he works with a couple of young people that think they're homosexuals. And, and they have come to him, and they have said to him, James, all the other Christians, they hate us. And, and we know that you don't agree with us. We know, because we've talked, that, 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 that you believe that this is not God's plan for our lives, that this is wrong, that this is sin, that this is wrong for us. We know that, but we also know that you love us, James. That's what they said, not, not me. See, where, where are we forgetting to put on that belt of truth when it comes to reaching out with the love of God in Jesus Christ. Where do we think life is about something else? And then when we go that direction and things become empty and disheveled and we don't have it together, where is that place where we wonder what happened? Today, God, in His grace, I say this this is the pool. This is real life. Our fight's not against flesh and blood. It's against...